Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ MV Angela Yee, Charlamagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building. Ripped Michaels. I don't call him Ripped no more. Ripped. <laughs> Ripped Michaels. <laughs> Ripped Michaels is in the building. Now, Ripped Hilarious. Michaels was a, a chubby round thing at one time. Pause, a round, bro. Whoa, God what damn, in the world? Man. A chubby round thing. <laughs> Jesus That's Christ. Right. He round. He no, round. but just like that, all you your man is chubby. thick. You might as well call me a thick man. <laughs> 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 he called me shit, Michael. That's what he called me. <laughs> you did lose a lot, though. I mean, you look good, Rip. Oh, thank you, man. <laughs> but see, that's the main calling me. You know what? Dude, you... I, I, it was this just guy weird. crazy. It was just a little weird. <laughs> little weird like, Cause I was like, I, I, I touched my chest, chest when you said it. Like, what I was doing? I felt like I had on pearls when you did. I was like, you know what? I am a bad bitch. <laughs> Thick or not? How much did you lose? Uh, I was used to be three thirty. So when wow. I looked at the, the old stuff that we did, I was huge. I wow. see why you want to stand next to me and all that picture. Charlamagne's looking away like this is Joe <laughs> Kelly. I never seen you. <laughs> <laughs> is your son doing comedy still? I never seen you at three thirty. Damn, yeah, 3:30, man. Yeah, wow. Huge. Yes. So why, why did you lose the weight? What, what got you into losing the weight? Uh, my daughter, man. And then Charlemagne's whole transformation. His transformation is amazing, too, man. <laughs> he want Charlemagne to God the more chest does stunt double. Like, don't tell him that. He got the smooth I'm skin and everything. You know I was like, this, how do I Thank you, get my I'm skin? Glad you know bro, bro, smooth, because I was buying the ambient soap in the bar and it's doing nothing. I got a great dermatologist. Dr. Natasha said you go get chemical pills, all types of stuff. I'm there. I mean, right. I need that. I need Do that. Do not tell him Morris Chestnut because he feel he really thinks he's Morris Chestnut. Because he had a hat off. He be sitting that night. He got his own Comedy Central show looking dead <laughs> in the camera now. <laughs> Not shying away. He don't understand. I've known Charlamagne since we used to do the what was the Laugh Factory with Wendy Williams. Yeah, back in the day. hell yeah, that was like thirteen, four, yeah, longer than that, like fifteen years ago. Yes, sir. Damn, we so, go damn. back. Absolutely. So now, what you got going on this week? And you got you're at the Barclays Center, the Fallback Comedy Jam. Yes, sir. The Fallback Comedy Jam. So what I did was bring me and all my celebrity friends together and try, try to throw the biggest show ever, even during COVID. So we're the first show to actually go out. You know, first black and brown minority owned business to go out, and I brought Dope. everybody: Monique, Two Chains, Busta Rhymes. Uh, Brandon T. Jackson, so many celebrities. Arnez J., just hilarious. I put over 13 comedians together, and I put together this ensemble. And DJ Envy is DJing, because you That's know right. I don't go anywhere without Envy tearing it up first. So it's a full concert, full oh, wow. comedy Y'all show. Y'all just going at it with each other this morning. <laughs> yeah. You don't uh, go nowhere with Envy tearing it up first. No, but no. But, <laughs> you can't this morning. I know, right? <laughs> God damn, what are y'all doing? I know, right? It, it, it sounded weird. I, I, but I'm comfortable enough in my manhood That's to right. say so, stuff like that. Like, I compliment my friends. That's like, right. I'm the only man to be like, man, I got some fine ass friends. There you go. Look at that. <laughs> Cause not, no guy ever does that. Like, yo, I got some thick as fuck friends. My friends are thick as hell. <laughs> now, thick, what? thick, thick. <laughs> no, no. Fine, thick. <laughs> So, so would you call uh, under, the, under the thick friend? Uh, huh. I'd be like, I got some cute squint eyes type friends, right? <laughs> <laughs> They're dark skin and make light skin faces. Look at that. <laughs> now the Wild oh, oh my God. Y'all took Wild Out on the road. Now you were the first person to take it on the road. That was your idea? I actually created the Wild Out tour. That actually started because I was with um, Nick and we was working on his special and uh, he was looking at Cat and he was like, y'all wish I could sell out arenas. So I was like, well, you Nick. He's like, no, nah, I've never been able to do that. So I was like, you know, you put me on the show, so I will do that for you. So I took my platform from doing, you know, you've been in my April Fools and mm -hmm. all that. I took my platform, and I started the Wild Now Tour. I started at Amazora, of all places, the one you hate, uh, wow. <laughs> NYC Arena. Mm -hmm. And it started with um, 1,500 people um, being there, selling out two shows in one night. And then I had uh, some people from ICM was there, and it was like, I was like, we did it. You see, this is the tour. And they was like, no, nah, these people don't matter. And I was like, what? What do you mean it don't, don't matter? matter? That's what I said. I was like, what do you mean? He's like, this is not a real venue. These people don't matter. I was like. What are you talking about? It's like, it's not as like in this arena. This is not these people. I was like, these are hardworking people. Yeah. So the next day I booked over 20 arenas and I put in every single arena and I sold out every single arena. I even hold the record in DC for selling out two arenas in one night. I did Capital wow. One, 17,500, Show Palace Arena, 12,005, uh, number two on Polestar. So. That's crazy. Like, I, I, you know, I wonder why Nick never understood the Wild and Our brand could do that. It was hard. I ain't gonna lie to you. Pushing that brand because no one knew what it was. Like, I promoted a lot of shows um, and putting that together was hard because no one knew when I was giving out flyers, me and my mm -hmm. daughter hand them on the streets and, and people were like, I don't want to go to this. This ain't something. This is my kids watch this. So actually putting it together and formatted where it's a full concert. And that's what the fallback comedy jam, same format where Nick comes out, tells jokes and then it turns into a performance and then we do some games and we do some stand up and it becomes this wholesome show that you want to bring your kids to and the parents watch. So it was just a dope to, to be able to add that to the legacy of Wild and Out. So does know? the lineup change? Like every show, or like who's who's gonna be at the Barclays? Oh, the Barclays. We uh, this this is the fallback. So we're okay. doing fallback comedy gym. So it's type of same thing. And we got it in two arenas. So I actually had four for the fallback comedy gym, but mm -hmm. the COVID restrictions stopped it from the other city. So we're in uh, New York on the twenty fourth, and on the twenty fifth, we're in DC. 
Now, how has the COVID been affecting everything? Uh, are they letting you come in the venues? Is it difficult? Or tickets? Is it a lot more difficult? People coming out like that? Man, this has been the most difficult thing. I just want to say since the mayor wow. put that mandate out that we have to be uh, vaccinated. It changed everything because you know people in the hood they rather get shot at than get the shot. People right, rather right. get ass shots than shot. So it's been a difficult thing, and uh, this has been the mayor's mandate to mm-hmm. to uh, actually you know put this together and make people get COVID shots and before you can come out. And he mm-hmm. changed it. So now I even got officers going out to businesses. It seemed like they're only going out to minority businesses and shutting them down. Mm-hmm. And I own them my own club. They even came to my club and they're like, "Yo, where's the mandates?" And they're giving you all these fines if someone's in your club and you're not pushing it. And I reached out to the mayor's office. I asked Envy. I said, "Hey, mm-hmm. let's get some awareness. Let's tell these people what they need to do because a lot of people don't have the education." to know about what it is. And mm-hmm. they're pushing it on Broadway really heavy, but they're not pushing it and giving us the education. So I reached out to the mayor to do a press conference and, and get him in and say, you want these minorities, you know, you know, Spanish and blacks, we're not mm-hmm. really vaccinated like that, nor do we have the information about what it is. So I reached out to them and the mayor was like, nah, uh, I'm, I'm good. I'm he good. said, nah? He said, nah. He said, nah, Man, I gave who? me the mayor, Bl- <laughs> mayor de Blasio told me no. What? Dead no. So I was just shocked about it. You know what? Since we're on The Breakfast Club, I'm calling out everybody. I don't know if you know, but I've been doing shows at every single borough. So mm-hmm. I feel like I should call the, the the presidents of each borough to see if they care too. Call them. You want to you call from yes. the, our line or your line? Let's call from either one. They probably won't pick up from us. They ain't going to 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 pick that uh, I got their phone numbers, but let's do that. Who you calling first, Rip? Who you want to call first? Let's go. Since it's in Brooklyn, let's call. Call Brooklyn. Let's call Brooklyn. Let's call Eric Adams. I Eric think he'll win mayor anyway. Let's give him a call and see if he picks up. Eric might have changed his number. He <laughs> might have changed his number he's, on you. He's the man now. He is the man now. He, let's see if he picks up. Now you got to tell him that they're being recorded. Oh, yes, right. Like the little disclaimer that they yeah. do. See? Eric, like this Rip Michaels about to harass me. <laughs> about <laughs> Ask me for some oxtails. At least leave a message if you don't pick up. You better pick up. Nah, Rip, I don't think he's picking up, Rip. I don't think he's picking up. We're going to go to the line then. Please think you're not going to leave a message? Well, you know we're leaving a message. You got to leave a message. Sorry, mailbox is full. Oh! Damn! Can't even leave a message. Damn! Change Eric Adams work. ain't picked up the phone since you he won the mayor back. election. Since no. he won the mayor election, you're changed. <laughs> now, Rip, are you, are you Haitian, Rip? <clears throat> uh-uh, no, I'm half West didn't have black, so. Let me, let's go. Let's go call Donovan, Queens. Queens should definitely okay. pick up. Who's that in Queens? That's Donovan. Okay. Borough president. We calling all the borough presidents on their direct cell phone. Okay. Nobody picking up, though, for you. I know. What How do you it? get all their direct cell phones, Rip? Because I've been doing stuff in the uh, hood. <laughs> I can touch you. <laughs> Hey, Donovan, how you doing, sir? First of all, hey, how you doing, sir? <laughs> first of all, it's Rip Michaels, man, and I'm on the Breakfast Club right now, and I'm telling everybody that we're trying to bring this awareness thing. And I told him how the mayor wouldn't really get behind it. And I was like, I gotta call you because you're all about educating minorities. You're all about this. So say hello to the Breakfast Club, by the way. Good morning. Queens, New York, New York City. What's up, Bradrin? Good morning. Good morning. Queens, get the money. What up, Donovan? Queens get the money. What's good? You gotta help Rip Donovan. Where you going? What you gonna do? <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, it is it is crazy. I'm looking forward to the to the fallback comedy jam, and I'm telling everybody who's not vaccinated, um, and those who are preaching conspiracy that they need to fall back so that we can get more New Yorkers uh, vaccinated. I okay. appreciate that because a lot of people don't know that the Wild Now Tour started in Queens. Without Queens, there wouldn't be no Wild Now oh, Tour. Oh wow, wow, wow! Yeah, wow. we start that at NYC Arena. Missouri, yep. Without without Queens, there would be no hip hop. I know the Bronx likes to claim it. <laughs> Ooh. Now Donovan, I'm not gonna lie, man. On the north side, man, they ain't cutting the grass over there in the middle of the streets, man. My mom and dad complaining, man. On the north side of Queens, man. Oh, actually, I just had this conversation with the mayor. I had the mayor out at the door restaurant last night on Baisley. And so I anticipate all of the medians are going to be cleaned up. We already compiled the location. So so if you want to give me the location, um, you know, I'll take it down and we're going to make sure that the medians yeah, are clean. Yeah, my mom called me today and was like, I need, baby, I need you to come cut the grass. I said, Mom, I ain't cutting no grass no more. I said, I reached out to the bar president, but I ain't cutting no grass. It is, it is one of my biggest pet peeves because I feel like the sanitation department should be doing this stuff without being told. Absolutely. Know, a, and it makes the, the neighborhood look bad. And that's my mom's whole thing. The neighborhood look bad. It look, it look like it's, it's run down. Yep, yep, yep. We're working on it. We're working on it. Well, right. thank you, Donovan. Well, thank you, Donovan. I appreciate it, man. Thank and, you so and, much. And, 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 yes, thank you for holding Rip down and getting the word out about, uh, 
you know, vaccines. Because, you know, our people, you know, the mad, the mad, the mad shit it on Rip. The mad said he don't want to talk to black people <laughs> about the vaccines. <laughs> but the I don't think your son is half black. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, but let me say this. You know, in all seriousness, we lost like 8,000 folks in Queens to, to COVID-19, from South Jamaica to Corona to Far Rockaway. We know, honestly, a lot of our folks were black and brown um, who were impacted by this, not to say COVID discriminates, but it hit our communities much harder. So we, we have an obligation to make sure we keep um, getting the word out. And actually, I'll say um, we hit the 1.5 million mark in Queens County just um, on yesterday. So I'm wow. really excited about um, what we're doing and, and what we're achieving in Queens County. True. Right. Well, thank you so much for checking in. Appreciate it, Donovan. Thank you. Sorry for oh, waking up, man. Ashley. You know what I'm saying? That's what it is. I'm up early. All right. <laughs> Get him out there to cut that grass. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, brother. So let, me, let me ask you, do you stay away from any jokes when you, when you tell jokes? Is there nah. anything that you stay away from? Because you know at all. you could get canceled. It's so easy to cancel somebody now? Not at all, man. I go fully, um, you know me from while now, all that stuff is all mm -hmm. about going completely in. So you know me, I, I'd rather lose my job than hold back on the joke. So Absolutely. whether pulling off wigs, throwing powders, nothing off. And how many times do y'all go at Nick knocking off chicks? Because I, I, you know, every once in a while, while now is it's, it's on 24-7, it seems like it. And it seems like a lot of y'all go at Nick. Oh, yeah. I mean, before it used to be Nick and Mariah. Yeah, Nick and Mariah. Nick now it's Nick babies. and all these baby moms. <laughs> yeah, he get to the point where like, enough, guys. Uh, I think he, it's never enough when it comes to Nick and knocking off chicks because he had, like, eight kids. I That's think. right. Uh, uh, and that's I think right. that Nick loved uh, his kids so much that he gave them each day on Baby Mama. So that's when you know it's love. <laughs> you get a mama. <laughs> it can never be enough jokes because Nick ain't got it. It's never enough babies. So no, why not? No, and that actually on set. So that part of my job. Now, I'm actually actually supposed to be at work right now at this very moment. They think I'm in the studio. Uh, you told no, me he's going to the bathroom. He's going to the bathroom. Who, who else we got to call? Let's, 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 let's do this then because I know you got to get back. Who else we got to call? I'm calling everybody. Let's see. He said something about the Bronx. Let's call the Bronx. See okay. If the Bronx will pick up. Pick uh -oh. up. Who is that? in the Bronx. Borough Bro president. Hey, it's Rip Michaels. What's up, sir? Who's this? <laughs> it's Rip Michaels. Don't you do that. As many shows I've done, the borough president of the Bronx. You better know this voice. Yo, how you got my number? Because <laughs> no matter what you do, I'm always in the streets. I can always touch you. <laughs> That's a good question. We asked the same thing. Not in the boogie down Bronx. <laughs> First of all, so you own a breakfast club, full dis uh, uh, transparency. So I was sitting there telling him about how we tried to get the initiative and get the mayor involved for the whole uh, COVID vaccination thing, and then it just fell through. And I was like, the Bronx show me love, because you know how many shows I've done, done in Bronx. So Paradise it's Theater. Probably Eric Adams calling. Yeah, it is. Actually, it is Eric Adams oh, calling. Oh, that is Eric too. Adams. We will call him right, right back next. So I'm calling on the Breakfast Club to, to so we can educate people in the Bronx because all the minorities, all the Spanish people, they don't know directly about uh, COVID and what what it's doing. And we got all this negative press. So we're bringing awareness to it right now. Since the mayor wouldn't do it, I was like, I know he will because everything starts in the Bronx. That's right. So I, I appreciate it in all seriousness. Look, we, we in the Bronx are taking and have taken COVID extremely serious. Um, before the pandemic, uh, Rip and Envy, we was headed in the right direction. We had the lowest unemployment rate in the history of our borough. The you know the the greatest amount of uh, people in the workforce. We've done so much in terms of economic development, and COVID totally devastated us. It killed over six, seven thousand people in our borough in such a short period of time. And what we needed to do was dispel any rumors about how we should proceed in terms of not only testing but also getting vaccinated. It's the reason why we've teamed up with the mayor. We did hip hop concerts headlined by Karis, one the teacher and Slick Rick. We've worked with our um, uh, clergy. We had over 160 uh, members of, of, of churches or heads of churches take the vaccine to dispel those rumors. And that's the reason why we've seen the amount of Latinos and blacks uh, here in the Bronx, especially in the um, younger age groups, almost double with regards to, take, to being vaccinated. And so we need to keep moving forward because unfortunately there's still so many people who don't take it seriously. Well, that's dope. We appreciate, I appreciate that information, that. man. And you know the craziest people in America come from the Bronx and all of Florida. So I hate when you say that, Charlotte. <laughs> you, know, you know the truth. You get the Dominicans to get vaccinated. It's a big difference. The Dominicans, though, I know do that, Bobby. Maybe they do something like that. I don't know. I don't have the show. I don't have the immigration. I don't want the car. I don't want neither, Papa. Well, it's good, it's good to know the leadership up there at least got some sense. I mean, why don't we just keep that scene to Florida, Charlamagne? <laughs> <laughs> now, there was a rumor that they were putting the vaccination in hookahs in, in, in the Bronx. Is that true? 
Say that again, I'm sorry. There was a, a rumor that they were putting the vaccination in hookahs in, in the Bronx. Is that true? Oh, my God. That's the only way to get Dominicans. Yeah, That's the only way you're going to get Dominicans to Puerto Ricans, baby. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> I know that we have to have some levity here, but, but no, I mean, I think that we, we need to be factual and we need to be serious in all honesty. I mean, look, in the height of the pandemic, our hospitals would look like war zones. They look like sci-fi movies. And, you know, again, it devastated our local economy. And, you know, unfortunately, we get so many people who, are, who don't have PhDs, who don't have, who are not scientists, who are putting out misinformation um, to our communities. And what I don't want, in all seriousness, in all seriousness, fellas, mm -hmm. what I don't want is that five years from now, when other communities are fully vaccinated, when they're back on the workforce, that the only ones that are dying from this are black and Latinos, and then no one even talks about COVID anymore. And so when you look at, you know, the different um, forms of COVID, Delta virus and everything, the only way that we can prepare for this is to get vaccinated. The only, and, and, and it's harmless. My, I've got my parents to do it. I'm vaccinated. My wife my children, um, and you know what? We're not growing any, you know, crazy body parts from our foreheads or anything. Oh. Uh, we're totally healthy, and I, and, and I think that if we want to proceed and, and enjoy all of the amenities and concerts and get back to some level of normalcy, we have to continue to educate. We have to continue to implore to our folks that they have to be vaccinated. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, man. Yeah, you tell you. everybody in Bronx to come to the Fallback Comedy Jam. We want your support, too. So it's going to be crazy. I want you to email everybody. I appreciate it, sir. Thank you, brother. Thank you. In all, in all, in all seriousness to you, Rip, thank you for what you're doing, for highlighting this issue, for, for bringing it to our communities and, and doing it in a way where they can enjoy themselves. So God bless you all. God bless the Breakfast Club. Charlemagne, stop talking about people from the Bronx. That <laughs> no, but you know hey. the Bronx moves to Florida. That's hey. what the thing is. I might, I might, I might add Texas, too. <laughs> Thank you, Chief. <laughs> Thank you, brother. <laughs> now, Eric Adams called back. So. Okay, so we done did the Bronx. We did Queens. Let's see if you pick up now. Okay, this is back to Brooklyn. Eric Adams. Eric Adams. Look, I told you he'd pick up. See, they didn't believe me when I called you the first time. So you made me look bad when I called you. He, he answered. The funny part is he answered the phone like he didn't just call your number. Yeah, I know, right? Eric Adams. <laughs> Don't start acting brand new because you're the yeah. man now. Listen, I, I don't pick up on all calls because there's a lot of haters out there trying to find me. So. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right. You, you didn't know if it was a bot mine because you know all the West Indians live in Brooklyn. You know it was some Jamaicans. Huh? Yo, what you do? Wake up, addict. <laughs> <laughs> So, Eric, I called you this morning, man, because I'm on the Breakfast Club, and I told him what happened when you tried to put the press conference with the mayor and everything and how it fell short and how we were trying to bring all this awareness and everything. And I was like, Eric Adams will hold me down because it's in your borough, the fallback comedy jam, and we're doing this huge awareness thing with all my favorite comedians. And I had to call you to show people that you actually care about what's going on, educating our people, and this whole pandemic that we got going. Trying to follow the mayor's mandate, by the way. And you know, what's interesting is that you're hitting at the heart of what the problem is. See, folks that don't understand our community believe that you can just broadcast something on CNN or the New York Times and Bebe is going to hear it in Tilden Houses. That's not how it rolls. You have to go to the credible messengers that are clear on how we receive information and the methods utilized. So we should be partnering with this amazing comedy jam and saying, let me give you the resources so you can go out and reach those folks who are just really uh, undecided or just don't trust cats that are telling them uh, to, you know, take the vaccine, vaccine. And that's why I said, listen, let me throw you this 5,000 so you can incentivize folks. And I just think that what you're doing is an amazing opportunity for people to use those credible messengers the right way. Hold up. Did you say, did, I heard money. Did he say he giving out $5,000? You said that, Eric? I, just, I want to make sure I hear it correctly. I, I heard it correctly. Because you all and I'm going to hold you to it. You said you're going to do what again? Well, we, the goal is, is that you have tickets. We're going to contribute 5000 to a nonprofit wow. that you choose that would allow those who come in, uh, you know, first come, first serve, to get the tickets if they take the vaccine. And just continue to incentivize people. They can they can laugh at a good comedy show, but they won't have to cry when they get COVID. So we're giving them the opportunity to laugh and not cry. 
I appreciate that, man. That's big up, man. Thanks Come for the right, donation, man. man. Hold up. We want to make sure that that's American money because I don't want you to give me 5000 in Haitian money because that's like $40. So we just want to make sure that that's American money. <laughs> I won't do it in yen. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Eric Adams, for checking in, bro. Eric, thank you, brother. Appreciate it, man. Appreciate you guys for the work you're doing. Take care. Yes, sir. Now, Rip, we know you got to get back to work. Um, we need you to keep your job. Yes, I definitely need my job, yeah, man. So come out this Friday. Uh, the show starts at 9 o'clock. Get there early. It will start on time. I will be pulling up at 9. So that same escort that you have, I need that escort. Got you. My son got a game at 7. So his game is going to be over around 8.15. So I'm going to need that escort to get there at 8.15. Got you, man. Right. And first of all, I want to say before I get out of here, thank Envy2, man. The very first guest, because I got my own show, like Charlemagne, following the footsteps of Charlemagne. Big shout out to NBC and the whole Peacock family for giving me my own show, NBC, Urban Long East overdue. and Treats. Uh, What's it called? So, Urban East and Treats. It's okay. uh, why I go to minority neighborhoods and I show that we got great stuff to eat in our neighborhoods. And Envy took me to one of his favorite restaurants and Shaq and all these other celebrities have come together and, and done this great show. And they bought 16 episodes out the gate and they're renewing it for another season. And, and so thank you for that, man. I appreciate that so much. Absolutely. Dope, dope, dope. And hold up. Let me, Charlamagne, are you actually coming for once? Because Charlamagne refused to come to my show. He's not coming. I got some things going on, Rip. I tell you, I tell you when we get off air, but this weekend definitely not a good weekend. See? I tell you when we get off air though. All right. Well, it's Rip Michaels, it's the Breakfast Club, and I'll see y'all Friday at the Fall at the Fallback Comedy Jam. 